first thing we need to do is set our preferences. So if you're on a PC, go to the Edit menu, and if you're on a Mac, go to the Illustrator menu and pull down to Preferences General. And then set your keyboard increment to an eighth of an inch, like I have here, and then make sure you have Scale, Strokes, and Effects turned off. And hit OK. And then we want to start with a black stroke and no fill. And then I'm going to change the stroke weight to six points. And I'll start with a tool here that I hardly ever use, the line segment tool. And just click on the artboard once. And it's good in a case like this when we want to draw a line of a precise length. So I want a one inch line at a 90 degree angle. And then I just hit OK. Next, I'm going to switch to my rectangle tool. The shortcut is M. Click on the artboard once. And I want to draw a quarter of an inch rectangle. I can just click on height here to duplicate that measurement. OK, and then switch to the white arrow. And this anchor point right here in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to click on it and delete it. And that effectively deletes the anchor point and the two segments adjacent to it. And now I have sort of an L bracket shape. And with this selected, I can switch to the free transform tool. The shortcut is E. And then I can just rotate it 45 degrees by holding down shift and just clicking to that first 45 degree increment. OK, now I want to position this along the line. And this is sort of approximate. But if you follow me a little bit here, you can get similar results. What I'm trying to do is get the top handle of the bounding box so it's close to the top of the line segment. And now I want to copy front. And on a Mac, that's Command C, Command F. On a PC, it's Control C, Control F. So now I've created a copy, placed it right in front of the first angle. And now I'm going to use my down arrow to nudge it down twice. So that's a quarter of an inch. And now I have the first arm of my first snowflake. And I just marquee select it and group it. And what I'm going to do is copy it and rotate it all the way around the circle to make the snowflake. To do that, I'll need the rotate tool. The shortcut is R. And that gives me this crosshair cursor here. And I can use this to place the rotation axis. Right now, it's in the center of the object. And I want to move it to this anchor point right here because this is the point at which all of the spokes are going to be radiating out from the center of the snowflake. So I just click on this anchor point here with that crosshair cursor. And now my axis point has been repositioned. And all I need to do is to just drag from here. Now I want to make this a copy. So I need to hold down the Option key or Alt key on a PC. And I also want to hold down the Shift key so that I can snap this to a 45 degree angle. And then I just release my cursor and release my keys, and I have the second arm of my snowflake. Next, I'm going to show you a really fantastic Illustrator command. So while we have everything selected just like this, I'm going to go up to the Object menu. And it's right here, Transform, and then Transform again. And the shortcut is Command-D, Control-D on a PC. Now when I release on this, and you'll see what happens, I get an exact copy. It it actually repeats the last transformation. But in this case, I've sort of performed a double transformation. I copied and rotated all at the same time. I was able to do that using the Rotate tool. And so now, every time I hit Command-D or Control-D, I get another copy rotated 45 degrees. So now I've created my first snowflake. And it's an eight-pointed snowflake. So it's eight 45 degree angles to make up 360 degrees. So now I'll make another eight pointed snowflake, and this one will be sort of a variation on this theme. To do this, I'll take the first arm, and it's already grouped. I'm just going to make a copy of it, copy front, and nudge it over. So I'm going to ungroup here. And I'll get rid of this angle here. And I'll just go with this top one. And holding down Shift, I'm going to drag it up until it's a little closer to the top. I want to create this sort of close little pattern right here. And now I want to make a copy of this angle. But this time, I'm going to use the Scale tool. I just double click on the Scale tool. And I'm going to make my copy at 140% of the original. And I want to hit Copy so that I actually make a copy. And then click the down arrow key twice. And so I've nudged it down a little bit there. 
Now I have a bit of a different snowflake spoke here, so I'll group these and then back to my rotate tool, same method as before, just hit R, place the axis point here at the anchor point at the bottom of the line segment and then holding down Option or Alt and Shift, I'll just drag 45 degrees and then Command D or Control D to repeat all the way around the snowflake. Now I can leave it like this or I can add a little bit to fill in some of the center area and I'll just ungroup one of these spokes here and I will copy front and use my arrow key to nudge this down a little bit and then what I'm going to do is just take this and scale it a little bit. I'm holding down the shift key and I'm just trying to position this so it's a little centered there and next I'm going to rotate it so I'll select it and then hit R to get the rotate tool and I will position the rotation point in the center of the snowflake by clicking and now this time I'm going to hold down Option or Alt and Shift to drag but I'm not going to stop at that first 45 degree increment I'm going to go along a little bit further down here to the 90 degree increment and then Command or Control D to copy that and now I've added just a little more complexity to that snowflake design for our next snowflake I'm going to select just these two line segments here copy front and using my arrow key I'm moving it over to the right and next I'm going to select the angle and holding down shift I'm just going to drag it down until it gets right down here to the bottom and these points intersect and then I'll select one and copy front and then move it up two increments using the arrow key and then again copy command C control C on a PC and then paste in front command F control F on a PC and then again up two spaces and copy front again and up two more spaces alright so I'll take this new snowflake arm and group it and this time I want to rotate it but I'm not going to do it on the fly I need to get the rotate tool dialog box so I can type in an angle so to do this I hit R that's the shortcut for the rotate tool and as usual my rotation point is here in the center of this object by default and I want to reposition it as I've been doing down here at the bottom of the spoke and to do this while calling up the dialog box I need to hold down the option key and then click the point and you can see now we've got the dialog box here I'm going to type in an angle of 60 degrees and hit copy and then using command or control D I can just transform again to make this new six pointed snowflake <laughs>
into a complete snowflake shape. So now I have my stroke copies up here that I can play with the stroke weight and edit them that way. And I have these expanded shapes here ready to place in my document. Mm -hmm.